Good morning. Peter Drucker said, the greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence. It's to act with yesterday's logic. We cannot solve today's and tomorrow's problems with yesterday's solutions, yesterday's thinking. We have to think in new ways. We have to create new ideas, new solutions to do that. The uh, average business now has a lifespan of just 14 years. The average tenure of a CEO has dropped to only four years. So we've got to look at how we can change the way we lead and manage. How can we lead them in a different way that does engage them, that does bring them in, that does take advantage of their capabilities, that does build their talent? Now, at one level, people lead through their position. I have the position of leader. I have the title. I've got the corner office. I'm on the organizational chart as the leader. So you do what I say. Now, when you lead through your position, this is primarily leading through fear and punishment. You do what I say, or you suffer the consequences. I'm the boss. I make the decisions. You do it. Unfortunately, this creates a culture of coercion, and all it does is create disengaged employees. So we have to move our leadership up to another level. Instead of leading through position, we need to lead through power. Well, what is the power that a leader has. Primary power is they control the purse strings. They control the money. So this is leading through incentives and rewards. Rather than trying to punish people for what they don't do or don't do well, instead let's incentivize people. Let's give them reward when they do something that we want, when they do it well, when they succeed. People comply with what we want, but that doesn't really engage them. We've moved it from disengaged to not engaged. You see, the problem with these two forms of leadership is they are forms of transactional leadership. It's very difficult to incentivize creativity. <laughs> hey, give me a creative idea and I'll give you a reward. That does not drive initiative. That does not drive innovation. It does not drive that creativity. So we've got to go back and evolve to an even higher level of leadership. Instead of leading through position or power, we now need to lead through purpose. We need to lead through why. Why are we doing what we're doing? What is our purpose? What are we trying to accomplish? And this is leading people through self-motivation, trust, responsibility, and accountability. Instead of trying to manipulate people, let's start treating them as adults. And let's take advantage of their natural drive, their natural desire, their natural motivation to succeed. And when we do this, we build a culture of commitment, and we create engaged employees. We build that engagement where people want to work with us. We become a talent magnet for the best talent out there. They want to be in our organization. They want to be in our environment. They want to be in our culture. And this is what's called transformational leadership. Because now we're leading from the inside out. Rather than manipulating them from the outside, we're leading them through intrinsic motivation. If you can move your organization to this higher level of leadership, you become one of the few, and you become the organization that everybody wants to work for. You can attract the best talent, keep the best people. But it's not just about that. It's also about bottom line results, how we lead, just by changing the relationship with our people. How do we go about doing that? Well, the easiest area, the number one area that we need to look at is how decisions are made. Because that really tells how empowered our organization is. You see, when people are led by purpose, when we have a shared purpose, a shared ideal, a shared goal, a shared vision, we can now start moving decisions down the track. Because we're all pursuing the same purpose, we're going to make decisions that lead to that purpose. And it's by pushing those decisions down in the organization that we build trust with our people. And it's also by pushing those decisions down to organization that we build speed in organization to deal with all the change and turbulence. That's how we've got to do it. Now, why is this so important? Why is it so important that we create that trusting relationship? Because it's a concept called ownership. When somebody makes a decision, they own that decision. And ownership creates commitment. And the productive output goes up tremendously. 
If we look at satisfied employees as a baseline output of 100, if we have dissatisfied or disengaged employees, their output is 71, 29% lower than just satisfied. Now, if we engage our people, output goes up by 44% over average. But when we empower our people, when we create ownership and commitment, output goes up 125% over satisfied. A huge increase in productivity, a huge increase in that commitment, a huge increase and what they're going to deliver to the organization. And the funny thing is, it doesn't cost us any money to empower people. All we have to do is change the way we lead. Well, let's look at the second challenge. Productivity and employee development. Because that's what we're after. We're after increasing the success of our organization through our talent. We look at how these things affect performance. And this was a study done a number of years ago, and, and it's also been repeated. Goals, clear goals increase performance by 25%. Quality feedback increases performance by almost as much, 24%. But when we put the two together, performance increases almost 60%. Just by having clear goals, a clear purpose, and then giving them feedback, continuous ongoing feedback and coaching on how... In fact, if we look at productivity today, 70% of employees say managers don't provide clear goals and directions. I mean, to me, that's an astonishing statistic. I mean, what are managers supposed to do? <laughs> provide clear goals and directions, yet 70% feel they're not getting that. Look at what are our leaders or managers' greatest weakness? Number three was lack of training and development. Employees say they're not, they're not developing. Number two, lack of recognition. They don't recognize me. They don't give me any credit. They don't appreciate me. But number one was lack of communication. My manager leader doesn't communicate with me. And this is the number one reason for leadership failure, is lack of interpersonal skills and communication. It's not enough for you to have a clear purpose, you to have a clear goal. You've got to communicate it. You've got to share it. You've got to get shared commitment to that purpose and that goal. So let's look at how we change this. Let's go to the third challenge. Leadership development and succession. How do we build these leaders that can create this environment and this culture of engagement? Only 18% of organizations in India say that they have an ample leadership pipeline to cover most of their needs. Now clearly it's not because there's a lack of people in India, <laughs> but there's a lack of leaders. What a huge opportunity. I mean, you can be one of those organizations that has leadership development, has leadership succession plans, has a pipeline full of leaders. Well, there's been a study that's been done over many, many years, and now it's encompassing millions of people that have responded to the study. But what they found is that there's only four areas, four attributes of leadership that are consistently rated above 50% as important to leadership. And number one is honesty, integrity, your character. This is what we call personal leadership, how you lead yourself. How do you lead your own life? How, what goals do you have? What values do you have? What are your ethics? What are your principles? What are your beliefs? Number two was forward-looking. This is what we call strategic leadership. Are you able to look into the future? and see what the challenges are going to be, see what the opportunities are going to be, see the path forward. Do you know how to lead your organization to success? Number three was competent. Are you competent in your job? We call this personal productivity. In other words, how do you manage yourself? How do you manage your time? How do you manage your priorities? How do you manage your responsibilities? How effective are you in what you're supposed to be doing? And number four is inspiring. And we call this motivational leadership. How do you deal with other people? How do you deal with your team? How do you deal with your staff? Are you inspiring? Are you motivating? Are you engaging? So what we've done over the years is we've researched this, as well as some other organizations have been, done decades of research on this. And what, what they found is these are not only the four main areas of leadership development, these four areas also happen in sequence. 
They happen in stages. And there's four levels of leadership development. We start out with personal productivity. The first thing all effective leaders learn how to do is manage themselves. Manage their time. Manage their priorities. Be effective in their job. Be a good contributor. How can you lead others to be productive if you don't know how to do it? So we start with this area. Second is personal leadership. How do you lead yourself? Okay. How do you lead your own life? Why is this so important? It's an integral step in the process. It's because your character, your values, your principles is what creates the foundation of trust with other people. For people to trust you, you have to be trustworthy. Personal leadership is what creates that trustworthiness that builds the trust with your team. The third level is motivational leadership. How do you then take that and motivate others? How do you then take that and engage others? How do you create a relationship with other people? And finally, strategic leadership. How do you lead the entire organization? How do you lead your, your group forward? How do you identify opportunities, challenges, strategies? We call this the total leader. This is what we do in our business is we develop people through what we call our total leader development process. We take them through these four stages of development to help them become a true total leader. And the thing about this is all this research has found this is the proper way to develop leaders. Each level of leadership correlates with a particular stage of personal or adult development. Decades of research have confirmed that human beings move through these stages in a particular sequence. This means leaders don't skip levels. Research have found no examples of people who have skipped a stage or moved through the stages in a different sequence and succeeded. They've tried. A lot of leaders skip that personal leadership step about values, and it comes back to haunt them at some point. So to create the best leaders, we have to take them through a process. We need a path to put them on. We need a, 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 an actual procedure. You see, you can't develop leaders through a seminar. If we look at the learning process, we can see where the problem is. You see, we looked at the value of each phase of the learning process. 26% of the value of learning is in the pre-work, the goal setting, identifying what we're going to do to develop. 26% of value of learning is identifying what we're going to do. What do we need to change? What do we need to develop? Just 24% of the value is the actual learning event. But 50% of the value of learning is in the follow-up, the feedback, and the application. That's where the learning really happens. That's where we embed the skills, embed the learning, embed the development. Leaders have a chance to practice and improve. We go to the driving range. We hit golf balls. We take lessons. You've got to go through that process. But the problem here is, even though that's the value of each phase, if we look where companies are spending their money, they spend 10% on the pre-work and goal setting. They spend 85% on the learning event. And they spend just 5% on the most important area. So is there any wonder that these learning programs aren't working? Is it any wonder that two-thirds consider their development ineffective? Because they're not getting the application. They're not getting the feedback. They're not getting the practice they need to actually develop. They're getting thrown into seminars or thrown into uh, university courses or thrown books at them or whatever, and then said, go do it. <laughs> you can't create leaders in a classroom. One can learn about leading in a conventional MBA program, but you can't learn to actually lead that way. We have a lot of educated leaders. We have a lot of people who know all the different leadership theories, leadership concepts. But how many good actual leaders do we have? That's what we need. We think our problem is our people.
It's them that we need to fix. When in reality, it has to start with us. We've got to fix ourselves. We've got to improve ourselves. We have to develop ourselves first to create the space to develop our people, to create the opportunity for them to grow into being a more productive, more engaged employee. Thank you very much for your time this morning. <laughs> Thank you.